Hello, everybody. So you may remember last year on April 1st, 2023, I made a video where I was talking about why I was considering going all in on GM, on General Motors. You know, General Motors is a is a better company. It's a, it's a great business. I was really, really considering going all in last year. And I'm sad that I didn't because guess what? I would be up on the investment. Unfortunately, I didn't. I stuck with Tesla. I would be up on my GM investment today um, because, you know, I really care about the short-term returns. That's what I care about. I should have done it. That was a mistake. Should I go all in on GM? Should I double down on my, my bet that I didn't do? Uh, perhaps I should because Tesla is so down. So down over one year period, you know, so down. It's very, very scary. Oh, Tesla, the deliveries are coming tomorrow for Tesla. They might not be very good. What are we going to do? Um, now, wh why is GM up? Why is GM up? Well, I personally believe, and you may remember from that, that, that video, what I personally believe is GM is up because the uh, the Celestic, because of the Celestic. The Celestic is... Uh, this car that I'm so excited about, it's $340,000 only, right? It's not that expensive. And look at how beautiful the Celestic is. I want to get a Celestic. This is clearly a timeless car, clearly a car that has been around for a long time. That's the type of car that I want to own. And, you know, the Celestic is coming. So many great things are coming for it. Really, uh, between 100 and, and, and 150,000 cars. No, sorry, sorry, 100 and 150 cars a year. And, you know, the car, of course, is, is a prototype right now. But prototypes are pretty hard to come up with. And, you know, I believe going the route of a very high high-end, very luxurious um, uh, product is the way to go, especially for a company like GM. Because if you look at the main competitor of GM, right, Tesla, Tesla does mass market vehicles. Mass market vehicles, they're not very exclusive. They're not very impressive. What do people want today? Today, people want luxury cars. Today, in this analog, war analog war world we live in, it's important to be pulling up in a beautiful luxury car. And I also want to point out, there's close to no competition in the luxury segment. Do you know of any brand in electric vehicle, whether it's an EV brand or whether it's, a, say, a legacy brand? Do you know of any that does a luxury uh, EV? I mean, I mean, because because I don't. And 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 you know, we really need to to go after that segment that's the segment that's going to take off tons of people want to spend three hundred and forty thousand dollars on a car tons of people can't afford it and you know cars and this is something that i definitely want to want to say here is cars is one of these items that's going to remain a luxury product cars are going to remain a luxury product why for two main reasons well first of all in today's world you know today the world is very analog it's all about the physical world that we interact with and in today's analog world status can be achieved via the type of car you drive the type of car you drive is so important for your status today what you're seeing pulling in into the store you know nobody buys anything online so it's important when you pull into the store to be seen in a nice car you know same if you're a real estate agent it's important to have a nice car, be seen in a nice car, because of course no real estate ever happens or, or takes place online. So in the analog world that we live in, in the zero digital world that we live in, it's important to have a luxury product, a luxury car that you're seen in, seen pulling up in the morning at, at the office, right? Remote work is not a thing. And also, an, another thing is, is you can't make a, a, a luxury product be mass market. Like a, like like the, the mass market product cannot also be the best product. It, it is impossible today to have a mass market product be the best product. That, that, that doesn't exist. I, I can't think, I cannot think of a single company that, that, that does that, right? And, and, and this is why, you know, for example, books like Zero to One have, have, have never been a thing. This is why, you know, concepts of the best and the cheapest are, are not a thing. This is also why 
things like uh, you know phones very high-end phones they are very common this is a virtue phone this is a very high-end phone any person who's successful you see them see them with a virtue phone they don't buy the mass market uh, a smartphone be it iphone or android they would never be seen in the mass market smartphone they go for the luxury version it's all about the button quality the quality of the knobs the quality of the finish this is all of the m utmost important software is not that important on any modern day product we all know this and this is why i think it's wise for a company to delay their software investment and gm did that they just delayed the ultra cruise the software investment they just delayed that that's a wise thing to do for the analog world that we live in but let me move on i don't want this video to be all about the celestic which i love by the way look at how nice this car is right a work of art as singular as its owner beautiful i don't want this video to be all about the, the celestic and the knob quality and the quality of the build no 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 i'd rather tell you why i think legacy automakers will win in general and that is whether they switch to evs or, or whether they don't i still think they will win why do i think that Remember, entertainment only video, but why do I think that? Well, first of all, the dealership experience. This is a beloved experience that, that people love going to the dealership. If, you, if, you, if you've never bought a car at a dealership before, I really recommend you, you, you try it out. Um, don't hesitate to even go read some dealership reviews. You, you'll see amazing stories, you know, car sales men already putting the child seat in the back seat you know you'll hear stories of very reasonable very reasonable low apy car payments you you, you won't get pressure or anything like that at a dealership you know it's really a beloved american experience a beloved worldwide experience to go to the dealership and i think tesla will be in trouble because they don't they can't offer that dealership experience they can't offer that they can't offer another thing uh, that dealerships have which is transparent pricing the, the pricing is very transparent at the dealership we've never seen you know dealer adjustments dealer markup you know two thousand dollar window tinting that nobody wants we've never seen any of that at dealerships the, tra the pricing is very 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 transparent you know, I also think it's a great idea for all of these legacy companies to lever up and engage in revenue financing and issue debt on their own, being the ones issuing the debt on, on their trucks, etc. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't be worried about some of the videos that have been trending on TikTok recently, talking about how, uh, you know, today, again, 14% APY was trending on TikTok about uh, this woman saying she was going to get uh, repossessed on all of her cars and she's just, she was just going to give the car back. You know, it was only $3,000 worth of car payments. You shouldn't worry about that. The value of the collateral that is being used to issue that debt to engage in revenue financing, the value of that collateral is strong and is going to remain strong over the long run, right? I mean, the, we know that the, the cost curve declines for gas cars it's not that much and we we know that full well we also know that vertical integration is overrated right why would you want to vertically integrate everything there's there, there, there's you know we know that having everything decentralized is great i mean look at boeing boeing has a great decentralized supply chain and everything is is fine bringing anything in house has so many problems you know you really want to be organized really as an assembler at the center of a network and have a supplier 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 to deal with and multiple levels of supplier vertical integration as a movement really makes no sense and perhaps the last point to me and this is where this, this puts entirely in doubt electric cars in general in my view and and, and i thank many of you in the comments section for pointing out to me that evs are never going to be a thing thank you for for helping me with that realization um people are already used to gas cars and that's really the really the big deal people are going to stick to their gas cars because they're used to it right adopting a new technology is hard you know it's it's not obvious and i even even doubt that people are going to move to 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 evs i really doubt that 
that? You know, why do I doubt that? Well, first of all, for, first of example, it's too cheap. We're, we're, we're too cheap. You know, if, if you an EV, if you charge it at home, it's about five dollars. That's suspicious, isn't it? It's too cheap that you could get three hundred miles, three hundred and fifty miles for just five bucks. That we know that cheap is uh, is often sign at time a sign of of a scam. So it's it's too cheap that it costs five dollars. I I honestly don't understand it. Five dollars a charge? What? No, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, why is it ten times cheaper than gas cars? Something is fishy, isn't it? Another one is it's too convenient. You know that's why I f I, I doubt it's going to get adopted because you know it, people love to go to the gas station and 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 when you meet an an EV owner, it's not just a Tesla. What they tell you oftentimes is, oh, I haven't been in, to a gas station. Ever ever since I've owned that car, I, I don't go to gas station anymore because I charge at home. They miss it. They miss the beloved experience of the gas station, the cleanliness of the gas station, especially if you have a diesel um, a diesel truck or a diesel car and, and you pump diesel. You, you know how clean a uh, gas station or diesel, diesel is particularly clean. Um, people love all of that. They love the convenience of a gas station. They love having to go every week. They love paying 10 times more. More charging at home really, really makes no sense. Another thing that is fishy is, is is really the fact that these electric cars are following the, the consumer electronic cost curves that that they are reducing in cost year after year. Uh, that they really behave like flat screen TV, where, where each year the vehicle gets better and cheaper, like a flat screen TV. It's it's fishy. Why would it follow the consumer electronic cost curve? Why do EVs fo don't don't follow the appliance cost curve, which is you know more more expensive year after year, like like regular Regular cars, regular cars work like that. You know, EVs are just getting too cheap. I mean, that, that BYD all over China, that ten thousand dollar BYD that they started to sell in Latin America, that's never going to be a thing. And, and Tesla also makes no sense. We're talking about coming up with a car for twenty five thousand dollars, a Model Two that would also be this cheap, and that would also charge at home, and that would also be clean, and that would also have very few moving parts, very few repairs for just twenty five thousand dollars. That's fishy. I don't think that's going to happen. And, you know, this is this is something, though, the, the last two are a problem, but legacy automakers are working on it. And and, and, and I guess I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. It's a good thing that they're working on it. Uh, a problem of these, of course, is they are too quiet. And, and obviously, so this is Hyundai, but Porsche does the same thing. Um, what they do is is they go out of their way to, of course, recreate the engine noise of the, of the gas car, both inside and outside. Outside the car has speakers, and the speakers recreate the noise of the gas engine. Because once again, it's fishy to have a car that is just too quiet that doesn't make the, the noise of a gas engine. So, so, so the, the legacy automakers are working on that. They're doing everything to make sure that the noise of the accelerating car, the, the loud noise of car, you know, that that beloved buzzing that people who live close to highways really, really enjoy, uh, they are working really hard to get that back into the EVs because EVs, unfortunately, don't come native with that noise. And of course, the biggest criticism, and I understand this criticism, is that EVs don't look good and, and they don't really look like cars. And we saw many people criticizing the Cybertruck for not looking like a car. And I, I you know, I want to give a kudos to Ford on, on this one. Ford is really picking a, 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 a hallmark playbook you may remember of the auto industry, this was a playbook. So, of course, when uh, when automobile became a thing, you know, people people did not understand why, why there was no horses on the carriage, right? Because there was an engine instead. And so, of course, they started adding back fake horses to make sure that the, the electric, the horseless carriage, you know, the car, the horseless carriage, they wanted to make sure that it still looks like a carriage. And so they had fake horses in front. And this, this playbook, of course, is taken by, by, by Ford. So this, if you see, this is a Ford F-150 uh, Lightning, very successful uh, vehicle. You, you can see almost nothing makes this car look like an EV. This car does not look like an EV. It looks like a, just a regular, regular car. And thus, it looks good because it looks like a regular 
car a little bit like the carriage with a fake horse also looked good because they looked like a regular carriage so these last two points of course uh, legacy automakers are working hard on them but unfortunately they haven't found a way they haven't found a way to avoid these other issues of electric cars which calls into doubt in my view the entire transition to EVs and lastly you know I, I want to conclude by showing you um, how my uh, well I don't own it I should have but showing you how GM stock really performed uh, over the last year compared to Tesla it's, it's done a much better performance and as you can see oh, oh wait a minute wait a minute okay this is oh this is actually over uh, 13 years so so it's not true over 13 years so over 13 years turns out Tesla has done roughly 40 percent year after year for more than 13 years it uh, turns out GM has done about the same returns as a bond fund uh, for the for the for the past 13 years. But of course, it's with significantly less risk, right? GM has done that with significantly less risk, um, and so there you go. I don't know why I made that mistake. I should have chosen. Uh, I should have chosen the one-year chart. I, I don't understand why I went long term. I'm usually more of a short-term person. What is going on? I don't know. Anyways, you probably got it. This was an April April Fool's Day. Video. Video. I wasn't gonna do this video, but then I figured, okay, I'll I'll do uh, I'll do I'll do the video just so you know. I am not uh, really criticizing GM or, or, or anything. I think they're I think they're doing the right thing. They're, they're moving to EVs. They're, they're doing their best given their structure. They're doing doing their best given the factories that they have. Uh, and I wish GM and legacy automakers all the best. Uh, and I, and this was, this is a little bit of self interest, but this is this is you know don't forget I probably own some index fund somewhere uh, who has some GM and Ford etc. And and of course if they don't make it, the taxpayer will be the one who will have to make them whole. So so I'm not I'm not actively wishing the demise of, of, of any any company. And actually um, you know for for the, for the Celestic if you if you um, if you're a lover of a brand there's a lot of lover, lovers of the, of the GM brand and I don't doubt that longtime users and lovers of the GM brand will love this car um, but you need three hundred and sixty thousand dollars so that's that's kind of a problem um, but you know I wish them all the luck but but I'm obviously pro Tesla and I'm obviously not buying GM but Thank you for thank you for watching. This was definitely no advice, uh, no financial advice, no investment advice, just entertainment. Please like, please subscribe. I know different video today, but I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.